ein schwarzer Schatten erhoben. Die SA hat so wenig als irgendeine andere Institution der Partei. Die es wagen, sich an ihr zu versündigen. Nazi Germany's march on Poland in 1939, the threat of conflict burst into shattering reality. War of a dimension the world had never seen was introduced. Before it was ever involved, America began preparing its men. The long conversion from citizen to serviceman began. Sometimes it seemed like a hopeless task. But almost before they knew it, America's sons were soldiers. Their training for war, however, began under conditions something less than realistic. It was still possible to believe that America could remain untouched and war still seemed remote. Then came Pearl Harbor. And now America was committed, with its every resource, to seeing the grim war to its bitter end. And its job would be the soldier's job. Some of the sad and heart-twisting qualities of war never change. And some change enormously. World War II had almost the entire globe as its battlefield. It brought new dimensions to the experience of combat. The soldier fought everywhere, and he went into battle every way he could get there, through the air, over the seas. He hit a hundred beaches, large and small, in the vast world of the Pacific. fought his way through jungle hells whose names the world had never heard before. And on the other side of the globe, he inched his perilous way through the bleeding fields of Europe. He fought in villages where his fathers had fought before him, in towns grown old in peace in cities which for centuries had stored the flower of man's Western culture. Destruction lay in the wake of every victory won. The blood of heroes colored every mile of ground. Fighting weariness and aching loneliness lay behind every statistic of success. But through city after city, the victorious soldier pushed on, and the jubilation of the people was his reward. On the other side of every liberated city, lay the war again, another battle to win, another mile or another 20 to travel, another day to fight. Through three and a half years of Holocaust, the soldier moved in an agonizing but relentless march, pushing back the encroachments of aggression until the enemy finally lay crushed and defeated. How jubilant was the taste of victory how sweet the rewards of peace. A bruised and suffering world stirred again to the triumphant strains of victory. For the soldier, it was the proud end of a long and arduous road. From all the remote places where he had traveled, from all the scattered battlefields, he returned home again to find a soldier's welcome. He 
returned to the life he had left as citizen soldiers for generations before him had done. And because the world he had preserved seemed at last so ready for peace, he turned his pursuits to peaceful things. But despite man's bright hope, aggression had not yet been eliminated from the world. The fragile peace was suddenly shattered. The communist-led North Korean army plunged across the line which separated it from free South Korea. And now, once again, the soldier was on foreign soil, making his soldiers' way through the kind of troubles which had always beset his brothers. the soldier's fight, the kind of fight on which victory and every war behind him had depended. Korea added new names to the honor roll of heroes. It added new listings to the roster of once unfamiliar places, which would forever after be part of the nation's history. Taishan, Seoul, Old Baldy, Fort Chop Hill, and it added another page of valor to the soldier's record. And like all wars, the cost was high. For bravery is not cheap, nor are any of the qualities which give a man what it takes to stand and fight. What are the beliefs for which men will fight? They range from faith in a nation which strives under God to achieve its destiny, from a capacity for honor that springs perhaps from something fundamental in man's spirit. From these, all across the broad range of human experience. Through eight generations and a dozen wars, the individual American within reach of the enemy's cannon has searched for his personal identity with the massive forces of history which have made him and his rifle the agents of the national interest. And because he has in his own way, in his own time, found his answer, his nation has found in every succeeding test of victor's strength and a shield for peace in the modern army of today. He has fought well, this soldier of America's heritage. He won a nation, built it, and defended it against every threat to destroy it. And his most enduring monument is that nation itself. <laughs>